So this is an update uh, for our, from our last episode. So what happened with us is that uh, that last weekend technically was our last weekend without a baby. Um, so Alana was born on February 1st and at 12.09 a.m. Yeah. It was super cool. Uh, it was one of the greatest experiences uh, of my life for sure, obviously. I wait for you too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so from my perspective, uh, I was in the room the whole time and uh, I really challenge every man to do that if you think you can. If you don't, that's okay. That's not, you know, that's okay. Um, it was a super intense experience um, because we went in on Thursday morning and we d she didn't actually have the baby until Saturday, Saturday midnight. So like Friday night, Saturday yeah. midnight. It's a long time. <laughs> it was a long time to be in the hospital. Um, and the whole experience itself was just, it was intense, we were having a baby, right? Um, so there's a lot of little stories that we can tell in that process, but just to kind of give a quick update, and we don't want this to be a super long video. Um, when she was born, uh, she was six pounds, 14 ounces, 19 and a quarter inches long. It was, it, obviously it was a lot of uh, elation. It was a really great experience that she was finally here, she was finally born. And then right away, almost immediately, uh, they bring in the NICU and we are told that Alana has a cleft palate. And the nurse is giving me all of this information uh, right away, who I need to talk to, what kind of surgery is going to need to be done, and all of this stuff. And um, it's over. I'm overwhelmed at the moment. And uh, it was just, it was a lot. It was very scary. Uh, we had a very good doctor uh, who delivered Alana and she had the presence of mind uh, to allow us to have a little bit of uh, skin to skin with mom yeah. and that was huge uh, in that moment because after that we hadn't we weren't able to do a skin to skin for days uh, she was in the NICU there at that hospital for a few days yeah. and then she ended up getting transferred to a children's hospital where she was there for a month. The whole month of February, she was uh, in the NICU. And that was a huge uh, deal for us. While at Driscoll, uh, the goal was to see if she could improve on eating. So due to the cuff palate, she couldn't really do the whole suck, swallow, breathe, um, which infants need to do in order to eat. And she struggled a little bit um, trying to catch her breath and um, obviously when you have liquids going down your throat you would have to choose do I want to eat or do I want to breathe and so she would kind of stop um, trying to swallow and just focus on breathing or one or the other so she uh, we took the whole month to see if she would improve on that and she did improve from uh, when she was born to a month later she did improve but it wasn't en enough or it wasn't what was needed for her to come home um, so we were approached with the uh, option of doing a G-tube and so we made me and Lucas made the decision to go ahead and go with the G-tube surgery um, in order for her to come home so one the hospital didn't want her to stay there much longer because then there's a higher risk for infections being in a hospital around I mean there's p kids are in there for other reasons too so just other sicknesses and two they also mentioned that we'd be able to bring her home if we went ahead and opted with the G-tube. So, um, we went ahead and did the G-tube. She has been home for over three weeks now, which is really exciting. She, we had to slowly go from continuous feeding on the G-tube to going back to 30 minute feedings, which would allow us to go back to bottle feeding. So, she's getting there and the goal is to eat purely by bottle eight times a day. It was a super scary decision to get the G-tube. We were very nervous. It is a um, surgery. It took days for us to even come to grip, come to grip with uh, choosing that. And we uh, looked for videos online, looked for YouTube channels for families that have gone through this decision. 
and what uh, life was like with the G-Tube and all that stuff. And so we're going to be doing a few videos about that, um, uh, what to expect with the G-Tube, uh, feeding, um, cleaning it, all that kind of stuff. If you have any questions for us, uh, and maybe you're considering getting a G-Tube for your child, uh, comment or send us an email and we would uh, be happy to be able to share our experience and what it was like. Obviously we're not medical experts so we can't tell you to do this or that, yeah. uh, but we can at least let you know what it's like for us. And so, yeah, that's our, that was our journey with this G-Tube stuff. Hello, baby girl. Hello. <laughs> Como estas? I love you. Hello. Hi, baby girl. Is that mama? Hi. Your eyes are on me or mama? And we are back. We have been just catching up with having a baby at home, and that's different. <laughs> Going from no baby to having a baby, you do get tired. But yeah. we are back. We probably will try to be posting at least once a month. I wasn't going to have enough days to spend uh, that I wanted at home with uh, with Cindy and the baby. And now because of this, we have to we have to stay home and I don't get to go to work till at least mid-April to late April. So that's honestly a blessing in disguise and we've been home for these past, I don't know, three weeks now? Yeah. And um, I'm really grateful uh, for that through this time. What are some things that you could be grateful for uh, during this stay at home uh, time? And what are some things that you are wondering about Lucas and Cindy? Kimmy? No, what's that? Squirrel! <laughs>